Why is it that we intuitively believe that Neanderthals were primitive? We more than likely think that Neanderthals were primitive because we've been led to believe that they possessed primitive traits. Neanderthals, in contrast to modern humans, had thick brow ridges, a large jaw, a sloping forehead, and robust teeth. Since similar features are found in apes, and since apes and humans are thought to share a common ancestor, then we are often taught that these features are primitive. Even Richard Owen, a 19th century anatomist and a creationist, fell foul to such an interpretation. Speaking of the brow ridges in non-human primates, Owen says, <coughs> It may be concluded, therefore, that such feeble indication of the supraorbital ridge, that's the brow ridge, as exists in man, is as much a specific peculiarity of the human skull as the exaggeration of this ridge is characteristic of the chimpanzee. In other words, the lack of brow ridges is a distinctly human trait. He even used this logic to reject the then burgeoning idea that humans and apes shared a common ancestor. One only wonders what he would have thought of the first Neanderthal skull, which was described in 1857. And this idea is still around in popular culture today. Since 1857, when the Neanderthal remains were found, the prominent ridges above the eyes, which were claimed to be an exclusively ape-like feature, have become symbolic of early man. And unfortunately, even in the sciences, the use of the supraorbital torus as a species-specific taxonomic trait has continued to the present. A supraorbital torus, by the way, is when the brow ridges connect to make a single feature. As it turns out, very large brow ridges, sloping foreheads, large jaws, and big teeth can actually be found in modern humans. Consider the skull of this man who only recently died in about the 1850s. Notice the prominent brow ridges and the lack of these ridges in the generic anatomical model that we're all familiar with. Notice also the sloped forehead, which rivals even that of the Neanderthals. The robust jaw and the size of the molars in comparison to our generic skull are also quite different. In fact, this particular skull even possesses a slight protrusion of the jaw called prognathism, a trait that once again is commonly associated with primitiveness. The length of the upper palatine and maxillary bones in comparison to those of the generic model really bears this out. As it turns out, some modern humans even possess an almost complete supraorbital torus. Now remember, that's the name given to the brow ridges once they connect into a solid feature. And keep in mind that some paleoanthropologists, even today, they still use a complete supraorbital torus as a species-specific trait that's indicative of an evolutionary past. Clearly, however, these features are not primitive. Certainly, they are rare in modern populations, but they're not primitive. So what is the purpose for those brow ridges? Well, it actually depends on who you ask. This paper suggested that the lack of brow ridges is related to social cues and associated with eyebrow movement. But I think the best explanation comes from this paper, which suggests a biomechanical solution. Essentially, the very strong muscles attached to the mandible and the temporal region of the skull work to pull the sides of the skull down, while biting tends to push the midline of the skull upwards. This combined action promotes bone growth in these areas, which can even occur during adulthood. Superorbital development appears to be an adaptive response to net bending over the eyes that can take place even during adulthood if biomechanical conditions change. In other words, our modern obsession with soft, tender, and overly cooked meals may well have changed the very appearance of our skulls. Now, from a creationist perspective, the presence of prominent brow ridges may even have adorned our first parents, dependent as they were on a plant-based high-fiber diet, which would require greater levels of bite force and longer periods of mastication. 
As it turns out, there are more than likely a number of different variables at work in the growth of these brow ridges and in the development of other cranial and jaw related features. But the presence of these so-called ancient traits in modern humans should at least cause us to think twice before we assume that these traits and their presence in ancient peoples be interpreted in terms of Darwinian evolution. Of course, that leads to a few interesting questions. What are creationists to make of so-called primitive peoples like the Neanderthals, and what did Adam look like? To find out, please make sure to watch part two, which is coming up soon. So that's all from me, Ken Colson here at Creation Unfolding. Please go ahead and pound that like button if you thought this video was interesting. Uh, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and ring the bell for easier access to more videos as they pop up. There's a website, www.creationunfolding.com for more resources. I've got a book if you're interested. There is a donate button, which is now in the description uh, if you're so inclined. Client. And look, the greatest thing that I think you can do is pray for me. So if you can spend just a few seconds and pray for me right now, I'd much appreciate it. Thank you and goodbye.